What's up guys, Ella Gamer here, and today I'm bringing you guys episode 4 of my Timberwolves Rebuild series. Now, I'm recording in a little bit different of a room, so hopefully the audio sounds a little bit better. It might sound a little bit worse, I don't even know uh, what to expect with that, but hopefully everything still sounds good. So here's a look at some of our player stats. Of course, last episode was opening day, so there wasn't really any statistics to show, but you can get a good look at what's going on now, and you can see Murray Cardinal is really doing very, very well for a rookie. And then James Harden's just beasting with 30.2 points per game. And that kind of brings on the assumption that we are taking on the Rockets in today's episode. So here's a look at some of their, their team's player stats. And it's obvious that James Harden and Dwight Howard are leading that team to where they want to go. But either way, let's listen to what Shaq and Ernie have to say in the 2K Sports pregame show. Hello again, everybody. This is Ernie Johnson. Welcome to 2K Sports. Glad to have you with us. And the legendary Shaquille O'Neal sitting alongside. Tonight, it's the Houston Rockets as they'll be playing against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Well, for Minnesota, it's been a terrific start to the season for them. They really had their act together coming out of training camp, worked out some kinks in the preseason, and now have hit the ground running. You know, Shaq, some people call Dwight Howard Superman. They also call you Superman. Uh, how do you keep Dwight Howard engaged into the game for a full 48 minutes? First of all, Ernie, let's not get it twisted. There's only one Superman, and he's sitting right next to you. Anyway, Ernie, to answer your question, <laughs> if I was the coach, I would run plays for Dwight early in the game. You have to keep feeding him the ball. You have to keep him engaged. If he's scoring, you keep going to him. If he's making free throws, you keep going to him. He's not scoring, not making free throws. We go away from him for a while. We let Harden dominate the ball. But to answer your question, the original Superman says you feed the pseudo-Superman. Meantime, how can I keep you engaged for the entire game? Just keep feeding me, baby. Keep feeding me. I'll try to remember that. It is almost game time. Kevin Harlan standing by. How about it, Kev? All right, guys. So the pregame show is over, and tip-off is underway here at Rocket Stadium down in Houston, actually known as the Toyota Center. I... I'm not a very familiar person when it comes to stadium names. I really got to get a better feel for that. Uh, when it comes to like some other sports, I'm pretty good. But So I guess we are at the Toyota Center right now. Right now, we're going to throw one down to Marcus Saul. And on the topic of Marcus Saul, he is not going to be on this team for much longer. I discussed in the last episode just the, the reasoning behind me wanting to trade him. He's only averaging 10 and 8 or 12 and 8 or something like that. And we are paying him $20 million a year. Now, with my personal belief, you got to be averaging at least 20 and maybe 11 as a center if you're going to be paid 20 million dollars a year and he's barely even averaging half of those numbers so i figure there's really no way that i'm going to keep on to him with uh with a 20 million dollar contract so on that note based i mean not based but on the next episode marcus Saul will be traded you guys will see the trades we have made we make two very very big trades uh, in the next episode so make sure to stay tuned for that one i think the players we get are going to make you guys really really happy but on the topic of this video you see right there jj wilcox hits the three now wilcox has been one of my favorite players to play with because this guy has just been dominant uh, in every aspect of the game he's been very very good of course driving the paint that was kind of the idea when we got him but something that surprised me is his ability to actually shoot from outside the court i didn't expect him to be a good shooter coming into the league but he's actually doing fairly well he's averaging somewhere between uh, 30 to 40 percent from the three-point line which is you know not incredible but i expected it to be even below that i expected it to be somewhere in the high 20s but he's actually averaging like in the high 30s so that's actually very very good something i've been very happy to see and he's actually been putting on some highlight clips for you guys you see his athleticism on display every once in a while and I, i'm not sure if it's this episode or next episode but uh yeah he's he's started showing us athleticism a little bit more as the season goes on but another player I know you guys have been digging is Murray Cardinal. And on the topic of him, watch him drain this three down in another rookie's face. I'm not sure what that guy's name is. But yeah, Murray Cardinal is an absolute monster and a very, very good pickup as he hits another three right here. This guy can just shoot the lights out. And something that's funny is I was looking at his jump shot release. I was trying to get an idea of why his release is so fluid. And he actually does have James Harden release form. So it's ironic that he's playing James Harden in this game. And uh, yeah, they kind of have the same release. So... Something I want to actually talk about is, you see this rookie, his name is actually, now that I remember, it's D. Stapleton. And this guy is, he, he just drains from everywhere on the court. Uh, you see right here, they pass out to him at the three-point line, and he drains in Cardinal's face. And the ironic thing about this guy, and the thing is, 
is he's hitting all these shots. And I, I'm not, I'm being completely honest here. I checked his his attributes during this game. His standing mid range is 63. His standing three point is 60. So he's hitting all these shots, but I don't understand why. And right here we get that alley oop, just the alley oop blade, nothing too big. But I don't understand what 2K is doing to me. They're hitting me with that 2K cheese because a guy with 63 points shouldn't be making it rain in some some pretty lengthy dude's face. I mean, Murray Cardinal has a seven foot four wingspan. As right here, he hits the three. So I don't understand why uh, why this Stapleton guy is having so much success from the outside parts of the court. So I was kind of confused there. I just wanted to bring that up because I thought it was kind of funny. But right here, because you see Cardinal passing it over to Wiggins, who passed it over to Wilcox. So Wilcox is trying to get something going. He's trying to use some ISO moves. Uh, it doesn't really work out, though. He luckily is able to find Cardinal, who is circling back around, and he hits that mid-range jumper. Cardinal may be one of my favorite pickups. Now, I did discuss this a few episodes ago, or maybe even last episode, that Cardinal may be my favorite player that I've ever drafted. And you guys are getting a display of that right now. You see, it's another three. And this guy, honestly, I feel like I'm playing with Kevin Durant when I'm playing with Cardinal. And even though Cardinal's a lower overall, he literally plays the same way because he's such a dominant player. That's right there. We get that alley-oop to Andrew Wiggins. So Cardinal is just an absolute monster. I'm having tons of fun playing with him. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys are enjoying watching him just put on a show. I mean, he hits another three right here. This time, absolutely, in just a dude's face. The guy was, was like breathing on him and Cardinal he was pulling a Lance Stevenson and Cardinal slow man hit it in his face so this guy and he's another three right there so Cardinal is just um he is the man he's averaging I think it was 16 points per game when I showed you so uh if you can average six somewhere between 16 and 20 your rookie season I'm pretty sure that puts you among you know the ranks as probably a good future scorer of course if Cardinal ever hit his prime I expect him to average somewhere between 24 to 25 points per game that's the type of player he is, and that's some pretty dominant statistics, if you ask me. So I'm very happy with uh, my decision in the draft of picking Cardinal and the support you know, that you guys have been giving me through that draft and all this stuff. So, and see, we hit that free throw up 50 to 49 at the moment, and that's not a very comfortable lead. So we're trying to get something going, trying to extend that lead, and J.J. Wilcox is going to put his athleticism on display by cutting or making it look like he's going to cut right, then actually cutting left and getting that nice little kind of like I don't know what you call that dunk. He like started on one side, finished on the other. But either way, he's going to hit a three right here. So he's got, I think it was six straight points or something like that. He, he went on a little bit of a roll right there. And he's actually showing, his off, I mean, showing off his ability to hit from long range, which is something we didn't really expect much of. But you see right here, Stapleton actually does finally miss a shot. You didn't see much of that because this guy was draining for some odd reason. But then right here, James Harden manages to get the offensive rebound. And James Harden at the free throw line is pretty automatic. And he's going to hit that free throw. So you see right here, we're only up by eight, but the game is basically coming to an end. Although James Harden hit that, you know, that that kind of fatality type three, he just tried to keep his team looking good. Uh, it doesn't really do anything for them. I basically shoot that full court shot just to be kind of a douche because uh, I wanted to run up the score. It really didn't change anything. I kind of wanted Cardinal just to get more points. So I figured why not try to check up a full court, see if he hits it. I mean, he hit basically every other three that game. For all I know, Cardinal's so freaking good, he could probably hit it from full court every once in a while. But either way, if you guys enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. Make sure to comment your opinion of this series and what I do to make it more interesting. Also, make sure to share this with your friends so we can get as much support on the series as possible. And make sure to subscribe if you have not already to stay tuned to this series and other series I got going on on my channel. Thank you guys for watching and peace out.